Welcome back, everybody, This Week in America. Thank you for joining us on the program. Website, of course, thisweekinamerica.us. On the program today, as mentioned, we're talking with Jimmy Key. He's a native of Alabama, resides currently in New Jersey. Jimmy's a graduate of Essex County College in Newark, works for Nestle's Beverage Company, and he's with us on today's program to talk about his new book, What's Yet? Jimmy, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Uh, it's good to be on here, Rick. Thanks for having me on here. It is our pleasure. And this really is an interesting, fascinating new book where you talk about the love affair with the car. And basically you're saying your car is not you if it's not personalized. Talk about doing that. because, And you mention and, and you stop and think about it, we've got names for everything, all these objects in our lives. We should have one for our car as well, shouldn't we? Yeah, because, you know, we have the tendency to name everything to identify it, you know, so we give it a name, you know, and it, when you have a car, it, it reflects you to a certain extent, and sometimes they're special to you, so you want to give it a name, you know, say me and Betsy going to take a ride. Well, yeah, and talk about when you started doing this, and as I'm going through the names here and thinking about the love affair we have with the cars, it takes us back to those those teenage years, the first time that we drove, the first time we had our own car, the first time we bought our own license plate. Talk about your experiences, because I, I, in the book, I get the impression that, th that this love affair started at an early age for you. Yeah, well, I'm a, one of the baby boomers. And back in, I, in my teens, we all had cars, you know, that was the, the era of the muscle cars. And most of the guys, they always gave their car names so it would identify, you know, to the other guys that, you know, oh, this car is, is pretty bad in the quarter mile and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But a name always stands out when you start talking about them, you know, the different cars in our neighborhood. Yeah. Did you have fins on your cars, the early ones that you drove? I was driving my dad's car, this old Chevy, and it had fins on it. And if you got a little crosswind, you were suddenly going sideways down the interstate. That was, I think those were the 60s, 61s, or the 59 Chevys. That, yes. You know, they had little fins on them and stuff like that. No, well, basically, we I was got into cars in the 68, uh, around that time, 65, 66, like that. And most of the guys, they all, we all had names for our cars. So that's one of the reasons how I came up with that. And so it seemed like the kids nowadays, they don't think of stuff like that, so... I just wanted to bring it back so maybe they can catch on to it and, you know, keep it alive. So the best way to do it now, instead of having it writing on your car like we used to do, you know, we it would be legible. But now you can get it in license plates. The book and we're talking about. Nice. Yeah. And the book is like really easy to I mean, it's simple to read. It gives you ideas. And what's your name? And that's why a what's your name is the name of the book. It's written by Jimmy Key, our guest on the program. Information available, of course, you can buy the book all over the place. It's available through Doran's Bookstore, for example. Uh, the website is doransbookstore.com. And if you go to our website this week in America.us, you can link on directly to, to get a copy of the book. When did you decide you were going to put this book together? And I'll mention the book. The book is not where you sit and you read chapter after chapter. It gives you ideas. And they're not all the, the obvious ones that, that you would think of because a lot of the obvious ones are already taken. It gives you uh, a couple of columns where it's got actually what the plate is and, and what it's meant to signify. When did you decide, you know, I'm going to put a book together? Because a lot of work had to go into this. That's a good description that you gave of the book, Rich. Um, I decided that, um, after I had got, got my car and I wanted to have a special license plate to it, and I put, it, I got my my license plate. You know, you can only get a vanity plate if you have no points and stuff like that from motor vehicle. So my record was pretty clean, so I got it. And then as I was riding, and then I seen some of the names on some of the cars and stuff on some of the plates and stuff. I said, ah, maybe they they just couldn't think of something. So let me just help them out. So I just started jotting down different names and stuff, which took me about a year just to come up with most of the names that you see. You know, it's interesting because one of those for for new car, everybody would like to put a plate that's got new car, especially when it's their first car. But chances right. are most combinations of that are gone in the particular state. And you have new whip, N-U-W-H-I-P. So you're very creative about how you go. And it's interesting because somebody would look at that and go, now, what what does that mean? So it really gets people talking. <laughs> well, that's the object of That's one of the objects of the book. You know, it shows you how to abbreviate. You can put a whole sentence in a couple of letters. Well, and yeah. you can give a description in a couple of letters. You see what I'm saying? So that's the purpose of it. 
I would think once you go through this, in fact, you're reading that, and it's like, you know, I'd like to get a new license plate every year so I can try out new things. How, how many names did you go through with license plates? How often do you, do you change? I have, I have three. I have three. I only use two, so, you know, I only have two cars now on the, on the road. I, on a motorcycle, you can only put four letters, so I didn't come up with nothing for that yet. But on one of my cars is um, not enough. And the other one is Hot Fun. And you can find the abbreviations and, and the code for these in the book, What's Your Name? Jimmy Key is our guest on the program. And I would assume this is a good conversation starter. I can see on some of these, if you're pulling in a parking lot and you're looking at somebody's plate and you're not quite sure exactly what they're trying to say, but you know they're trying to say something. That's not a state-issued plate. You can really begin conversations and, and maybe even build friendships that way. Oh, yeah, it can open doors because sometimes, you know, you're riding and people pull up on the side of you and they give you a nod, you know, okay, okay, like that. And if you're in the parking lot, you know, then some people can't be trying to figure out, what does that say? Well, um, can you, what is that you got on there? <laughs> and then you just break it down to them. And they were like, oh, now I see, now I see. What kind of reaction do you get, not only to your plates, but, but, but to the book, having it out there and people having a chance to take a look at that? And, and I'm sure they're reading, and it's natural. You read the book, you're going to be circling some that you'd like to see if it's available in your state. What's the reaction you've been getting to the book? Well, everybody that gets it, they, they like it, and they're, they're shocked by it because it's one of its kind, you know, and it's, it's, it's educational also. It shows you how to abbreviate which a lot of people have gotten from or they try to abbreviate something and then they, they don't know how to abbreviate it. So it speaks for itself in a lot of ways. Well, yeah. In fact, one of the things I'm reading through this, and it's like the book is actually educational because it does give you uh, a sense of vocabulary. It gives you a sense of how to condense words, how to, uh, to abbreviate words. Teachers ought to assign this in like sixth grade because it would be yeah. educational for the kids in the classroom, wouldn't it? Yeah, it, 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 it's, a, it's a widespread of things that you can uh, acquire from this book. You know, it's interesting, and you talk about it, it was like about a year when you were putting all of this uh, uh, together, and it's an alphabetical, so you can go through it and put this uh, put this together. And, and I've got some favorites as, I, as I'm looking through the book. What are some of your favorites? What are some of those that you went back and you and you look at it now and you sort of chuckle like that was pretty creative on my part? Oh man! <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like saying pick the child you like the best out of out of the family because you have so many. I have so many in there. Some of them were so fascinating, you know. So I think my favorites are the ones that I have on my cars. You know, the two that I like not enough because there's not enough of. It can go any way you want to, you know, not enough food, not enough money, not enough time, you know. So I think that's one of my favorites and hot fun. That's uh, that that says a lot right there. Yeah, yeah. Those that's are on my bet. Those, are, on my bet. those are good ones. What's your name is the name of the new book. It's written by uh Jimmy Key, uh, any other any other projects that you're working on? Anything car related that you're thinking about? Because your mind is obviously going 100 miles an hour here in in, in trying to to capture this love affair with cars. Well, I'm, I'm working on a little something, something. I'm still employed, so so I don't have the time to uh, you know devote it that much. So I figured another. Two or three years once I retire, I got something uh, kind of hot on the press I'm going to do. Well, we'll, we'll have to stay in touch so that we, we so we stay on top of that project. Let's go back and talk about those, those teen years. And I was hearing the other day where a, a lot of kids growing up, getting a driver's license is not that important to them. It's like, yeah, okay, but they keep putting it off. I literally counted down the days until I could get the learner's permit and go in and get the driver's permit, the, the license, and be able to drive by myself. Are kids missing something that that relationship that that us as baby boomers had with our automobiles? Yeah, they, you know the kids now just take things for granted. They don't look at the value of it. They don't uh, show the appreciation when we had to just our first car we struggled to buy and everything. We washed it and shined it, you know, and stuff like that. But kids today, they just don't know. So I figured. By acquiring something like this, and then you can only get those plates if your license are clean, it not only will make them think a little more, but it'll cut down on, on the accidents and the different things, you know, that, that they take for granted, you know? 
Yeah, and it's something that uh, that is taken for granted, obviously, by a number of people. But suddenly, it's back to focusing on the car. Uh, the book is What's Your Name? And it's very simple to read and will give you a whole number of ideas. I-, I can't believe where you came up with some of these. And they're all in alphabetical form. And you can go through and you can pull all of these out here. I've got uh, one for me, for example. Like, okay, I like that one. You've got one, the uh, four, and then me. Uh, again, various uh, junk before. I like that junk, B, F. Uh, how, do, how, how do people go about finding out in their particular state if that license plate is available? Does it vary from state to state? Um, yes, it does. Um, most of the times, if you, you, when you acquire, um, apply for one, you have to put down three, three choices. So just in case of your first choice, your main one, have not been taken, or if it has been taken, then that way they, you, they'll move to the second one. If that one has been taken, they'll go to the third but more than likely, when you choose them, a, a lot of them don't. A lot of those out of the book are not even taken. Well, that's interesting. So some of these I have circled. I might be able to find in uh, in our great state and see if see if I could get these. What oh, type sure. What type of problems do you have with some that some executive, some bureaucrat will say? No, this is a uh, this is a little off color. This is like crossing the line. You've got uh, G spot, for example. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you've got G and then an S and then a pot. I, are, are some of these would they be X rated? Would they uh, maybe not make it through the uh, the process? Well, it depends on the state and it depends on the the uh, license plate itself. More than likely, the ones I have are all pretty much accepted because I, you know, have sent in a few names and what have you uh, and in, investigated it on some of them. And most of th- this book here, I, I would dare say you would hardly find none in there that they would reject because I wanted to keep it like that to, so that w- there would be none in there that will take up space and that would be a loss, you know. Yeah, and I can almost hear the, the smile in your voice as you're saying that, like, I think I can slide these through about anybody, because some of these right. are not that, if it's real obvious, it's not going to make it, if it's subtle, and no, they got to think no. about it, they're busy, they're just pushing through the paperwork, and you're going to be able probably to get your license plate okay. When you finish the book, are you going to do a revision on this? Because I'm thinking your mind is probably always at work, are you constantly thinking, okay, here's another one I can put into the D's the next time I do I this? Know. I already have two pages due to uh, revise the book, Rich. So you were all set for a revision of that. The book is called What's Your Name? <laughs> Jimmy Key is our guest in the program. The book is available at DorranceBookstore.com, available all across the country at the usual outlets. And, of course, you can go to our website, ThisWeekInAmerica.us, and link on directly to, to Jimmy's website. How much fun has this been for you? I, I, I sensing that, okay, this never really was work. It's like I can't wait to get to that uh, legal pad so I can sit down and, and put more names down. It, it's been, a, uh, it's been I, I'm telling you, it's really been a lot of fun. And it's, it's exciting. You know, it was my first book, and, and, and it's something you don't see every day or hear every day. So that's what makes it so unique. No, and it, it, like I said, it really takes almost a linguist to, to sit down and be able to put this together to come up with, okay, this is this is what I want to say. It's been said before. How can I say it differently in uh, it, it numbers and letters so I, can, so I can get this through? Let's talk a little bit again about when you, when you, you first decided to publish the book. That's a big step and put it out there. And you're finished and the book arrives and wow, this is my book with my name on it, and I did it. What was that feeling like that this book that you put together is actually published and people are buying and responding to it? It was a challenge. It was a challenge. And, and it took me about a year, a little over a year, just to get everything together. Then you got to go through all the legal aspects of it to yes. get it legal, legalized and everything. So after when I sent it to the, um, the Library Book of Con- uh, Congress Library of Books, um, I, I was a little skeptic. I didn't know if they were going to approve it or if somebody had come up with the idea and everything, but it went right through. And after I got back everything saying everything was a okay and I could go ahead and print the book, I, oh, it was like, whew. It, well, it, was, it was exciting. Well, it was and, exciting. and there's nothing that I was able to find out there like this. This truly is one of a kind. Again, you're not going to sit down and read chapter after chapter. It's all set up uh, alphabetically with uh, the potential license plate and then what you're attempting to say on there. And it really does give you a new sense of pride and ownership with your car as well. It's almost like 
going back and, and restarting that that romance with the car again because suddenly uh, yes. it's not just a car a, a, a honda or whatever you're driving it, it's right. your car it's your personalized car it's got your plate on it and you treat it a little bit differently too don't you yeah yeah because it, you know it, it's special it's special you, it lets people know that there's something special about this car so i, I gave it a name i, I gave gave it a p- purpose you know just not just to be driving it but to let you know, and then it strikes up a nice conversation, you know, and it, it, it's something that could be passed on. Yeah, I'm sure if you're driving with a personalized plate like that that's calling attention to the car, you're more inclined to maybe wash it more more frequently than you normally would. It's like, okay, people are going to be looking at this car. I can't. I got, like, uh, mud all over that. I'm going to have to wash that off. What What have you found when when people come up to you and, and they see the plate? Has it worked for you as, like, a conversation starter? Oh, I stay true. But I was I was driving. And I, was fine. <laughs> I was a little over the speed limit, so he pulls me over, and I, he comes up to the car. I was like, "Yes, sir, troop." I said, "Um, I was trying to stay a little bit." I said, "But I I know I noticed I had went a little over." He was like, "Yeah." So I said, "Well, you think you could give me a break or whatever?" He's like, uh, "License registration." He didn't say anything. So I said, yeah, and I said, um, I met this uh, other trooper a few weeks ago named Karen Kraft. Do you know her by any chance? So he said, license, registration, and your insurance card. He goes back to the car. He comes back, gives me a warning. So he's getting ready to walk away. He turns around. He says, oh, yeah, by the way, what's that not enough about? <laughs> not enough money. <laughs> So and he had to laugh himself. <laughs> and it had to work. Yeah, when I said that, I wasn't thinking the conversation starter would be something like, hello, officer. But that's exactly what happened in your case, and it, and it actually worked in your favor. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. out of time. This has been a lot of fun. Jimmy Key has been our guest on the program. The book is called What's Your Name? Y-A. And at the end of name, of course, the uh, the question mark. That's the name of the book. It's available at Dorrance Bookstore. The website is dorrancebookstore.com. Available, of course, at uh, the usual book outlets. And you can go directly to that website by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Jimmy, an excellent job with the book. It brought back uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of smiles, fond memories, and thinking about those early <laughs> days when we had cars and we cherished yeah. those cars and we, they were a, a prized possession. And a lot of chuckles as I'm going through the book, like, wow, I didn't know you could get there from here. And you were able to with the book. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Work on the new project and we stay in touch and we'll do it again. Rich, it's been a pleasure, man. And and thank you so very much. man. It has been fun. And once again, the name of the book is What's Your Name? Why a Jimmy Key has been our guest on This Week in America. You can log on directly and get information on the book by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us.